Hello everyone, hopefully this is working uh, and uh, welcome to my live stream. As with all of these like super unprofessional live streams, uh, I expect the first 30 seconds to be me saying, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Uh, so hopefully you can hear me. Uh, apologies for the low quality of this uh, uh, picture of me. Um, but I'm using the built-in webcam in this laptop and it's, it's not tremendous. Um, I might swap and use a different webcam, but honestly, you don't need to see me. Uh, you're not here for me, you're here for, uh, for Ubuntu, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. So it's Friday. Hooray! Happy Friday, everyone. I uh, hope everyone's got a cup of tea or coffee or whatever tipple you have in the afternoon. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> hello to all the people who've just joined the chat. Hello, 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 all of you. Hello, Marcus, Daniel, uh, Rick, and Marius. Greetings to you all. So, um, what are we doing here? So yesterday, you may have seen, I did one of these where I upgraded my laptop from 1904 to 1910, uh, with 1910 coming out next Thursday. Uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to like, have a noodle around with it. It wasn't any formal testing that I did, it was just kind of noodling about. Um, today I want to do a clean install um, and to save time I've already booted my laptop into um, uh, 1910. I downloaded an ISO and here you can see I've already got it booted into uh, 1910. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, the thing I wanted to point out first of all is while I'm just doing informal noodling around uh, what we really benefit from is people doing actual proper testing um, and we have a set of tests that it would be really great if people could get involved with. Uh, we've got a weekend coming up, if you've got a spare hour over the weekend, apologies for the noise of the trains, I don't know if you can hear them, but if you've got a spare hour over the weekend you could probably knock out a few of these tests, uh, maybe successfully or maybe you'll find bugs, who knows. Um, but I thought I'd point you in the direction of where to go. Um, so, you yeah, know, this is the release announcement, um, which links to everywhere that I'm talking about. And there's a page that we looked at yesterday, which talks about how you go about upgrading to 1904, which is codenamed Eon Ermine. Uh, I can't say Eon without overdoing it. Um, and in, in this page, it talks about how you upgrade. But uh, the release notes also link to a place where you can download the images. So you can download the ISO images and then use whatever favorite tool you've got for sticking that ISO on a USB key. I tend to use a tool called DD Rescue, which is a command line tool. Um, and other people prefer things like, I think there's Etcher. And there's, um, I think Linux Mint has a a tool for writing ISO images onto USB sticks as well. So yeah, there's lots of these tools around and I'm pretty sure if you search, you know, your favorite search engine for, you know, write USB stick ISO image, you'll find a tool that, that does it for whatever platform you're on. So that's fairly straightforward. I'm not gonna go through in any of that other than that. But in here you can see it tells you where to get all of the ISO images. Now there's a lot of them because we are a wide and diverse family in Ubuntu and there is Ubuntu itself and then there's a whole bunch of what we call flavors. And flavors are built from the same repository of software. It's the same archive. And so you've got ones you may have heard of like Kubuntu, uh, which features KDE, Plasma and KDE applications, Zubuntu, which has the XFCE uh, desktop and applications and Mar Ubuntu Mate, which features Mate and uh, that whole experience. Um, and then there's others that, you know, maybe you haven't heard of like Ubuntu Chillin, uh, which is the Chinese spin of Ubuntu. Um, but, you know, you can pick whichever one. And, you know, you could pick one that is best for your hardware or the one you prefer using, or you could try choosing one that's completely outside your um, your normal use, uh, in which case that might be useful because you might see things that other people don't. You know, that whole a new fresh set of eyes on something uh, is often uh, good in terms of testing. So, you know, pick one. Uh, and I would also make sure you're logged in and signed up and all that for Launchpad because if you're going to file any bugs and loads of other resources that you might use, you're probably going to need a Launchpad account because that's where the bug tracker is and we never we may end up filing bugs in this in this uh, session. We've only got an hour, but it's highly likely we'll find a bug and we may have to uh, report a bug. And I'll show you how to do that if we get to that point. 
But the formal tests that I was talking about earlier are over here on the ISO tracker. If you go to iso.qa.ubuntu.com, I don't know if that font's too small to read, but if you go to iso.qa.ubuntu.com, uh, you'll find the ISO tracker. And you log in here, there's a button to log in. Um, you don't have to log in just to browse the tests, but logging in to report your, you know, your um, success or failure or whatever. Um, so down here, if we scroll down, it gives you like text, you know, read that, it tells you how to use it. Um, and actually there's a link to a video that was made like five, six years ago, and it's still appropriate now. It tells you how to actually use this because this site hasn't changed much in the, in the years. So we have a set of milestones. And um, so last week, you know, there was a beta release of Eon. And so there was a set of testing done on Eon beta. So let's open that up and look at a past set of tests because that allows us to see, you know, what it should look like. Um, and if we scroll down here, you'll see as part of Eon Beta, uh, there are lots of products and these relate to the various flavors. So you've got Kubuntu, Lubuntu, the NetInst, which is the, the mini ISO, often called the mini ISO, um, and all the different products. There's Ubuntu desktop itself. And they have a bunch of tests that are mandatory and when you click through to these, it will show you those tests. So here are the tests that you might want to do. Do an install and auto resize the disk. Do an install and don't resize the disk, like wipe the entire disk out. Uh, do an install with manual partitioning. So these are three entirely separate tests, entirely separate installs. So each one of those might take you like 20 minutes on a reasonable hardware it might take you a little bit longer so you've got to factor that in there's going to be a bit of time investment in doing these kind of tests uh, running the live session um, and installing with lvm and encryption so yeah there's loads and loads of loads of these tests um, and you know you don't have to do all of them it would be really super if you did but it would be really helpful you know to the teams of all of the flavors uh, if people had a go at these either on real hardware or in a vm both are appropriate. Some of them make more sense on real hardware than a VM. Um, so yeah, it's a good idea to click through those. And if you find bugs, then they can be linked in here. When you log in, you can link to a bug that you filed. Um, and that's all rather groovy. Uh, where was I going with that? I was going back to the testing track. So that was the beta. Uh, I'm running Eon Daily. So I downloaded the ISO this morning. Um, and I just followed the link that was way back here, the one that says CD image. Um, where's the Ubuntu one? Releases 1910. There you go. I just followed one of these links. And uh, sure enough, there's a 1910 beta. So there's the beta ones. Um, but there's also the CD image, which is where I got the daily. Uh, releases 1910. Is that the one? One of these links, he own no, that's the beta. Let's go back to the top. Whoop. And under Ubuntu, Daily Live. There we go. That's the one I down. Oh, maybe that one. I can't remember. One of these two I downloaded this morning. Um, so in there, you'll find the ISO image. Yada, yada, yada. Put that on a USB stick and boot from it. So let's do that. Let's boot from it. Um, and while I switch, let's have a quick look at the chat and see if there's any questions. Oh, no. Screen tape is kicked in, that's okay. So, in the chat, hello everyone. Uh, ah, Farron, hello. Uh, <laughs> do, 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 still noodling. Ah, oh, nice of you to drop by, Marius. See you later. Okay, so let's get cracking. So, uh, as yesterday, I've got a ThinkPad X220. Um, it's a bit crusty, it's like eight years old, something like that. And uh, but it's got an i7 processor and it's got 16 gig of RAM, so you know it's a you know moderately decent spec laptop. They're quite nice machines, these ThinkPads. You know, I'm a big fan of ThinkPads. Anyway, let me mute this thing behind me. Uh, there we go. Uh, so, um, what I did was I wiped. You may have seen a tweet that I sent earlier. I uh, just as a test, I DD'd random numbers over the hard drive just to see what would happen uh, so that I end up with a completely wiped machine because I want to do a clean install um, and then later on maybe I'll do a side-by-side -side install but let's actually try the install um, so we're booted into the live environment when I hit install 
And this comes up. This is Ubiquity. And I know some of the tests ask you to like check that the language changes. So, you know, that's a good quick test. Does the UI all change when you change to a different language? Yeah, it does. Successful test. That was good. So let's crack on and start installing 1910. Uh, I'm going to use UK English and hopefully my keyboard layout is correct. So that's that, that's that, that's that. All the keys that usually go wrong. Yes, that's good. Now, you could connect to the network or I could not connect to the network. Uh, let's connect to the network. Continue. So, what kind of install are we going to do? Normal install where you get all the applications, or the minimal install where it installs all the applications, then rips all the applications out at the end. Let's do a normal installation because that's going to be a bit quicker. Um, download updates while installing. This is fun. You know, what that actually does is apt get upgrade minus D, I think. So while you're while you're on the uh, live environment, that sits in the background and just downloads all the packages in the background. So if you left it installing and walked away, it would have the the updates on the hard drive, so that when you first reboot, they're already on your machine ready to be installed. It doesn't actually install them; it just downloads them. Um, I'm going to not do that because that can slow down the uh, install, and I I don't really need updates. Uh, install third-party stuff. Yeah, why not? Most people probably want to do that, and that installs all your codecs and nonsense that you might need on a normal running system. So let's do that. If you get any questions while we go through, just bark them out in the uh, chat, and I or someone else uh, will answer them. <laughs> hey, Ken is there. Hello, Ken. Ken works on the desktop team. Uh, so we've got a lot, bunch of options here. Now, this this screen changes depending upon whether there's an operating system on your machine or not. And obviously there's not because I DD'd random numbers all over the hard drive. So this doesn't show the option at the top to say, do you want to install side by side with Windows or whatever was on the machine? Um, so I have a slightly fewer options to choose from. Later on, we'll see that option. But I'm going to choose, oh, look. So we've got erase the disk and install Ubuntu, delete everything. I mean, there's nothing on it, <laughs> but uh, you could choose to encrypt it. That's good. Uh, or you can use LVM, allows taking snapshot and easier partition resizing. That might be useful if I had a desktop and lots of disks and I want to resize and stuff, but I'm not going to choose that. And I'm not going to choose encryption on this install. I strongly recommend someone does do that to test that the encryption works. Uh, so that would be a good idea for someone to test. I'm not going to do that on this occasion. But we've also got this new option, experimental, erase disk and use ZFS or ZFS. Uh, this will delete all your files. Experimental may cause data loss. Do not use on production systems. Well, this is not a production system. So yeah, let's hit that button. It's experimental. Let's try it out. Uh, yeah, this is new in 1910. It's only landed in the last week or so. Uh, this is going to wipe your disk. Are you okay with that? Yeah, go for it. The disk light is like permanently on right now. So I guess it's doing some partitioning. Yay. Where am I? Uh, it figures that out. If you if you are on the network, it uses, I think, something called GeoClue or something to try and figure out where you are in the world. Um, so it knows I'm in London. But if you, for me, if I don't have the network connected, if I didn't connect to the wireless, it would think I'm in New York. I don't know if that's just the default or what, but it thinks I'm in New York, so I just had to click on London. But because I've got the network on, it uh, it's got it. And interestingly, as soon as I press next, the time changed. I don't know if you noticed that. That said 13.45 just now. And as soon as I chose London and went next, it went up 
Time to change the time. So, my name is, uh, and this laptop is Deep Thought. And I'm going to give it a password, which is a good password. And I get the option to log in automatically or require my password. I quite like typing my password in, so I'm going to choose that one. So, if you were following uh, one of the uh, test scenarios that were listed uh, over on the test tracker, if I delve into this a little bit more deeply while that install is running, because that's going to run for a little bit. Uh, if you look at one of these, like let's pick uh, Ubuntu Desktop. Oops. And in Ubuntu Desktop, let's choose, um, you know, use entire disk. It actually tells you in here exactly what you need to do. So, you know, if you're good at following direct instructions um, and doing exactly what it says, then this is the job for you and it tells you what to do if it doesn't work like if all actions produced expected result submit a past result so you actually you know put a flag in the iso tracker to say it worked for you uh, if it fails submit a failed and file a bug and uh, ensure to include your bug number when you submit your result so if you do that it takes you to this page bug reporting instructions so yeah, this takes you through some steps and some documentation for how to actually file a bug. So I appreciate for some people, filing bugs is a hard, painful thing. Um, and the goal of this is to try and make it easier, less, you know, difficult uh, to, uh, to file a bug. Um, but the nice thing is the Ubuntu desktop team are always on hand to help you. And so, you know, even if you have difficulty, they can point you in the right direction as to where where to file a bug. The important thing is to get the thing filed. So it's chugging along. Um, <laughs> I do like this. Uh, so this is the uh, installer slideshow uh, that it goes through while it's while it's copying files, and uh, this does make me smile. Uh, this this uh, screenshot of Rhythmbox has been updated. I think in the last release it was Chemical Brothers, maybe. Uh, was the screenshot and now we've got Eurovision. I don't know if that's a commentary on Brexit or what, but uh, it does make me smile when I see this. Uh, so it's now chugging away. Uh, oh, good comment from Rick. Uh, check existing bugs if you can. So yeah, it you know it, it wastes time if you sit there and file uh, a bug and it turns out somebody else has already filed that bug. Um, and there's already an ongoing conversation somewhere else. You don't want to split the conversation. You go looking, and it explains how to do that in here. Uh, go looking for the bug first, because it might be all you've got to do is click the Me Too button uh, at the top. Um, so um, I can show you that, actually. If I just show you some bugs. Uh, I filed one a couple earlier on today, just to show you what that looks like. Uh, so let's find my, let's make this a bit bigger. Uh, so yeah, I filed this bug earlier on today and you know, if, if you discover there's a bug and you come to launch pad and you find that, ah, somebody else has already filed that bug. It's really super easy. All you gotta do is just hit this button here and there's a, yes, it affects me. And you just tick that. And that really helps because you'll notice this little flame on the right hand side this is the bug heat and the more people who do this i mean it's not just that but that partly contributes to that along with if there are duplicate bugs you know a lot of activity kind of drives this heat up and that's useful because when people are working on bugs it kind of makes sense to work on the ones that affect lots of people or are, you know, a real, real problem rather than just, you know, one pixel is off somewhere, that kind of thing. So it's a good idea to um, uh, to me too. We call this me too when you hit that. Um, hit that and say, yes, it affects me too. You don't have to like scroll down and say me too slash AOL like that. You don't have to do that. That's what that button is for. I think that button actually came about because we just ended up with loads of people, you know, saying me too in a bug report and clicking that makes it much easier. So that's good. Uh, what was I coming here for? Oh yeah, just saying that's how you tell someone, you know, the bug affects you as well. Um, super stuff. 
So I'm just sorry, I'm just reading the chat. Excuse me. Uh, there's some chat going on. Um, yeah, people chatting away. Good. So uh, let's go back to uh, the install. I think it's nearly done. Yes, nearly done. You can, you know, optionally open this up and see all the bits and bobs that are going on underneath. You know, that might be useful to you, but... I tend to just leave it, walk away, and when I come back, it's finished. Um, usually takes about, I don't know, 20 minutes, most. I'm using an SSD, so, you know, it's a it's a fairly decently specced machine. Ta-da! It's finished. So, in theory, uh, I should just now be able to restart, and I'll be in 1910. So it's going to go black while it reboots. I'll pull the USB key out. Uh, and it should boot off the internal uh, display. It's just going through the BIOS at the moment. And I'll have to switch it so you can see it because I'm using a capture card. Popey, can we? We can't see your other screen. What other screen? You can't see your other screen. You mean the one behind me? Oh, now we can. Yay. Oh, okay. Sorry. I should read all of the comments. <laughs> right, so it's now booted. And uh, I can prove that because, look, there's my mouse. And uh, if we come back and I... There's uh, this something I would really like is if I could do Super P and switch displays on the login screen. But I don't think you can. So I can't actually show you the login screen. Um, the only way to do that is to go into the BIOS and for me to disable the internal panel so it forces everything to go out to the external display. There's no way for me to say show uh, the external, uh, everything on the external display. I, I can't use the function F7 or Windows P to switch. So I'm just going to log in and then once it logs in then I'll switch so you can see it. Okay, so as you can see, it's up, but if I do super P, it switches. So there we go, successful install. We couldn't see your browser when you were talking about it. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, you know first run wizardy thing. Whoops, don't do that. Uh, I'm going to skip connecting to any online accounts because um, I don't need them. Uh, help improve Ubuntu. Show the first report. So this is the uh, report that gets sent optionally that just details stuff like, you know, what type of machine is it? How much RAM has it got? What kind of CPU? What size disk? What size screen? Wow, that's really specific. 277 millimeters by 156 millimeters. Is that true? Let's find out, shall we? 277 millimeters, is it? Good Lord, that's accurate. And 156 millimeters. Crikey. That's rather clever. I didn't know it did that. Uh, so <laughs> it's 1366 by 768, yes. So this is all the stuff that gets sent uh, optionally to Canonical to report what kind of machine you've got. Helps the developers decide what they're going to focus on. Uh, so I'll just hit next. I'm not using location services on here right now. I'm not using no maps or anything like that that might want my location. So I'm just going to hit next. And then it shows me a bunch of software. I'll install some stuff later. Done. Boom. So I've done a clean install of 1910. It worked, so that's good. So if I hit install now, there's some more updates. Oh, not much. Let's install them. Uh, I assume those are installing. Oh yeah, look, there's a little scrolly thing on that. That's nice, I like that. 
How long has that been there? I never open Update Manager, so I never see that thing. That's nice. Right, so that was successful. Now I did a I did a ZFS install, didn't I? So I should be able to go to disks and see. Ooh, look at that. It's got uh, loads of partitions and these are ZFS members and stuff. I know nothing about ZFS. I just know apparently it's the cool new thing. So, um, well, okay, all right. ZFS people, I appreciate it's not new, uh, but it's new to us. <laughs> uh, so that's cool. Uh, updates are done. Great success. End of stream. Um, so what I did earlier, I did a bit of noodling around. Uh yeah, you know, to try and do some things that I would normally do on a system, you know, like poke around and look for software, maybe uh, install some stuff. Let's install Steam. Uh, where is Steam? Steam installer. There it is. Be really nice if this was at the top, but there you go. Let's install Steam. So this should work. Okay. Um, Silent Robot says, I always, always, always get the crash reporter directly after, or even sometimes before installing Ubuntu. So, yeah, that crash reporter was, uh, was when was that? Was that 2012, 2013, something like that? We, uh, we added that. It's super useful, but I appreciate some people find it incredibly frustrating. Um, so, Steam is installed, so I should find it here somewhere. Where is it? There it is. Bop. Yay! So, the, you know, the Steam package in Ubuntu is just a shim, and then it goes and downloads the real thing when you launch it, which is pretty normal. Uh, so that's good. Uh, what else shall I install? Um, well, let's make sure the app, while that's installing, let's make sure the apps that are actually shipped work okay. Uh, web browser looks okay. Good. You've got the browser. Meet the rest of Firefox. No, I'll just start browsing. Um, what do normal people do? They go to YouTube, don't they? Let's not get a copyright strike, shall we? Um, is that going to work? Oh, works. All the whatever codecs and nonsense are in there, so that plays okay. That's good. Uh, what else do we want to do? Uh, we could have a noodle around in the file manager. I filed a bug earlier because uh, this is not good. There's a .desktop file, which I think should be a symlink. I think it should point to a folder where there's like wallpapers and images and, and stuff. But you double click this and it just opens in gedit. So there's a bug there. We filed it. Someone will take care of that. I also found a bug earlier. If you right-click uh, a folder, you get the context menu, and you get this extra blank line down the bottom, which probably shouldn't be there. It doesn't happen on files. Like, you don't see it there, but you do see it there. I mean, you know, these are not catastrophic problems. The install worked. I'm able to visit YouTube, and I can download software, and, you know, largely the system works. But, you know, it's just a little glitch that it'd be nice if it was fixed, right? Uh, interestingly, the Steam icon is not showing up. Uh, maybe it will after it's installed completely. Uh, we can have a look at settings, have a poke around in there. This has had a bit of an update, I believe. Uh, there's some settings in here we can fill around with. Uh, change the size of the dock. What's the smallest it goes? 16 pixels. I guess that might be good on a like a super tiny netbook, but uh, on mine, I like to have it around about 32. And I hear some people like the auto hiding thing. I, I'm not a fan, but I can see like it gives you more screen real estate. So, you know, you can totally focus, immerse yourself in one application if you hide the dock. I kind of prefer to have it there. I don't know why. I just quite like it there. Uh, I've always been like that. Uh, oh, you can position it on the right. That feels weird, but okay. I guess in right-to-left countries, that would be appropriate. Oh my gosh, look, it's Windows. 
what would be really good is if we could move that there. That would be cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty groovy. That all works. Um, I did notice something earlier that I thought was a bit weird. Uh, there's an applications thing in here. Um, so yeah, you can look at the applications in here and see how much space they're taking up. Um, like any one of these. And then when you hit open in software up here on the toolbar, it launches the software app and shows that application. So like if you wanted to remove it, for example, or see the details about that application, you go over there. And I don't know if this will show up on the video, but yeah, it does. Did you see that flicker there? When you click, it kind of stutters. I don't know what that is, whether it's opening GNOME software and then GNOME software switches context to show you the application or what. I need to file a bug about that, but I'll record a video, a little snippet of that, because that was just annoying me. I don't know how many people press that button, but that is kind of janky and I don't like it. So I don't know if anyone else can reproduce it. Maybe it only happens for me. Maybe it's Intel CPU. It's not fast enough or I don't know, but that's not for me to determine. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I quite like this. They've now sectioned these off. I don't think they were sectioned, grouped like that. That's quite nice. I like that. Uh, sound. This is all pretty groovy. I've been using this a lot recently. This is uh, pretty good. Don't know why you'd want that, but okay. That's the default one, isn't it? The bing. Yeah. I'm going to have it on bark. Oh, I'll turn it up. So, oh, no, not that one. Uh, well, my laptop's very quiet. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so easily entertained. I really am. Uh, some questions in the chat. Jolly, this is going past very quick. Uh, tweak tool for the dark mode? Yeah, tweak tool, tweak tool isn't uh, installed by default. Let me log in uh, to Steam and let that chug along in the background. Uh, feel free to add me on Steam. I'm Popey DC. Um, oh man, it's going to want me to log in. Um, two factor auth, excuse me, while I two factor log in to. I probably don't need to do this, but I'm going to do this. Um, Steam, type in your thing. Your thing is... Mm, mm, bear with me just one sec. Mm, 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 mm. Right. That worked. And you're back in the room. Uh, so, questions. Yes, there was one question uh, about... Tweak tool, yes, I should install that. Uh, Steam installer has no icon, a feature or a bug. Well, I don't know, it's got one now. <laughs> You're right, the little pop-up box didn't have one. I don't know why that is. Um, let's just install a game just to make sure this all works. Uh, I've got something that's a bit lean. This is a crusty old laptop, so I'm not going to run Skyrim on it. I don't think I own Skyrim anyway. Uh, but I can put a couple of smaller games on here. So I'll just install uh, that. And come on, chop, chop. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. There we go. That's installing, and I'll install this. Oh, go away. I'll install this as well because they're both really cool and they're a good test. Right, okay, so let's just leave that chugging away. Um, so, what are people saying in the chat? Tweak tool for the dark mode again. Yeah, that's the thing. So, we don't ship tweak, uh, gnome tweak by default, but you can. Uh, you know, find it wherever it's called. Is it just called Gnome Tweak or something? Oh, <laughs> Gnome Tweak. There it is. Gnome Tweaks. Install. There we go. Tweak Advanced Gnome 3 settings. Your theme is an advanced setting. Now, I did have a problem earlier launching something from Gnome Software, hitting that button. And I don't know if I have it again, but let's try it. 
Oh, it works. So that's not a problem. Um, okay. Uh, appearance. Ah. So, yeah, we did this yesterday. Uh, you know, try the new themes out. Oh, yeah. That looks good. I'm going to stick with that one. I like that. Um, other bits and bobs in there I'm not going to touch. There's some extensions in here that we ship by default. Not many. Uh, default fonts. I quite like this. Uh, I like focus on hover. That one. But I'll leave it at the default for now. So yeah, let's just go back here and make sure these games work. Um, just make sure. There's been a lot of like brouhaha about, you know, oh my god, the sky's falling, 32-bit support. Uh, but, um, yeah, Steam seems to work okay, so that's good. It's my kind of game, that is. This one's a little bit slow on this system because it's a rubbish laptop. It's a great game. You should buy it. <laughs> Checkanoid. I think it's Checkanoid. But yeah, as you can see, my poor laptop is a little bit slow. Uh, but this works. Yeah, that's a successful test. Pew, 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 pew. If I had a controller, I might test that, but I haven't got one handy. That's quite loud, isn't it? It's blow up. <coughs> yeah. Anyway, that's that. What else do I need to test? Uh, super low score on the high score table. Well done, Al. Right, so that worked. Uh, what else? Uh, <laughs> uh, reading through, yeah, we see the flicker. It's uh, tweak tool. So, fair enough saying the tweak tool thing has a. I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, in here, it's got a little thing, and he says it's next to shell because user themes is disabled in extensions. Ah, oh, you need to enable it to change shell themes. Such as your your Yaru Dark. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Uh, Ken's asking if it's a Zenity dialogue. Uh, no, it doesn't run Crisis, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, no, my password is not one two three four five six seven eight nine. It's got a it's got to have a capital letter and a full stop in it as well. Um, okay, what else do I need to do here? Uh, have we got time to do another install? I could try something else to do a side by side. Oh, that. I bet that won't work. Ooh, I wonder if anyone's tested this. Right, I've got two more USB keys here. Pick one. <laughs> one of them contains Zubuntu, and one of them contains Ubuntu Mate. I actually don't know which one. So you've got the white one and the orange one. <laughs> this is the Ubuntu branded one. Uh, which way up is that? That way up. So this is an Ubuntu branded USB key. There you go. And this one is just some generic rubbish. So which one shall I pick? Which one? Tell me in the chat, white or orange, and we'll do another install of something else and see if it works. Uh, da, 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 da. Is the chat still working? Everyone's gone quiet. Right. So I could shut this down. Um, oh, one other thing. Uh, wonder if I can reboot and get Grub on screen. Let me see. Let me see if I can get Grub to appear on the screen so you can see it. I'm just going to go into the BIOS while you're voting. And in the BIOS, which you can't see because it's uh, only on the internal panel. And if I go to configuration and display... I can say digital on ThinkPad, and then that will mean exit saving changes. Yes, it will boot without the internal display on and only the external display on. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Look at that. Hey. So I'm holding down Shift, which in theory should make Grub appear. 
I think, shouldn't it? No. How do you make grub appear? That did not work. It's now booting into Ubuntu. Hmm. Let me try restart. Okay, I found a bug. Uh, and I can't show it to you because it's on another screen. Uh, it's on the other screen. If you're on the logon screen, GDM or whatever it's called, um, where it's asking you, your, you know, to click your username, if you click in the top right-hand corner and click the power button, the restart option does not work. It does not restart the system. Neither does power off. Those don't work. So I will need to file a bug about that. Uh, or search for a bug and file it if it doesn't exist. So GDM, just making a note, power and restart. Good, we found a bug. Uh, I was hoping I could log in and show you the grub, the grub screen, but I can't, unfortunately. I thought shift would do that. Escape key with good timing. Hmm. Let me restart again and see if I can get... Yeah, restart works when you're logged in, but not from Grub. Right. Pressing escape, pressing it right. It's after that. Oh, no, don't do that. I don't want diagnostics, no. Ah! Damn it, that was Grub. <laughs> So yes, escape. Thank you, Farron. I need to stab escape. What? How do you get grub to appear? I don't want the grub menu. How do, like, this is... Oh, how do you do this? Come on, tell me how you get the menu up. Uh... Or do we just reboot and do it again? but not press escape quite so much. I think my problem is I pressed escape at the grub menu. <laughs> I don't think escape is the right thing. I always thought it was left shift that you hold to get grub to appear. No, it's not F12. F12 will give me my boot menu for the laptop. Surely it's shift. I thought it was. Yeah. End up in grub command thing. No. Nope, it's booted straight into Ubuntu. Zoiks. Hmm. Well, that's a failure. That's a shame. What can we do? What can we do? Let me try again. One last time. I want to get grub. See if playing this awesome video game of Alan pressing escape. Oops. See, I've done it, haven't I? I just pressed it once. Get in! I win at that video game. Right. So, the reason I wanted to boot into this thing... So what I did, I did actually press escape to get the diagnostics, then escape again to quit the diagnostics, and then I just pressed it once more to get grub and I got this and I was the reason I wanted to do this is because huh I thought there might be more options in here interesting advanced options I was expecting there to be some options related to uh, the fact that I've got ZFS but maybe not maybe I'm misremembering stuff um, oh I didn't take a snapshot did I that's why I need to play some more with ZFS, that's for sure. Right, did we pick a colour? Uh, orange, 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 purple, orange is mate, green one. Okay, so it looks like everyone says orange. So let's reboot into the orange USB stick and see what's on that. So I'll just turn the laptop off completely and then on. And let's see how much success we have with this. Now I will have to press F12 to get the boot menu up. Oh, no, not F12. Think finger button. F12. Um, this is quite novel. 
So I want to use the USB disk. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's Ubuntu Mate. <laughs> you chose wisely, everyone. So uh, this is the Ubuntu Mate 1910, the same daily image from today. So I don't know how different it's going to be from the image we tried earlier, but let's give this a go. Oh, by the way, let me show you something in here that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, let me just go back here and show you the tests in here, right? So remember we were looking earlier at all these uh, tests on the test tracker. One of them reminded me of this, so I wanted to show it to you. Um, where is it? 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 Oh, no. I can't find it now. Ubuntu desktop. Ha! Huh. Where's that gone then? There was an option in the beta, and I don't see it now. Oh, maybe it's gone. Oh, there was a, I'm pretty sure I saw a test in there. Maybe it's only in certain flavors. There was a test that was uh, free software only. So there's a, there's an option that's been in Ubuntu for years and years and years that most people don't know about. And I can show it to you now because I can show you the, the boot screen. If you press um, these function keys down the bottom, there are lots of things you can change. And one of the ones that I always change is F3 to change the key map. So Boots is a UK key map, right? But the other one is under F4. No, not F4. F6. <gasps> Down there. Boop, 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 boop. That one. Free software only. So this is an option that was added to the ISO years and years and years ago with so that you could install Ubuntu and only have free software, have no proprietary software on the um, on the system that's installed. I just thought I'd show you that because most people don't even know it exists. Anyway, I'm not going to choose it because I actually want my wireless to work. Um, try Ubuntu without installing. Try Ubuntu without installing safe graphics. Install Ubuntu. So I'm going to go try and see if we get an Ubuntu Mate uh, desktop. This is a bit of a slower USB stick. So while you chose wisely in terms of distro, it's the slowest USB stick in the world. Right, what other messages while this is booting? Yes, other people telling me uh, escape. Isn't it right shift, says McPhail. Uh, I always thought it was left shift. Uh, maybe it is right shift. But yeah, you really have to be a ninja to get the <laughs> boot screen up. Um, Stuart says, things I'd like to see tested, which might be obscure. Can you set the number of workspaces? Can they be named? Can you make apps remember which workspace they were on after a restart? Wow, those are good tests. I like those. You should test those, Stuart. <laughs> By the way, if you can get on the grub point, type exit to be kicked back to the boot menu. Oh, brilliant. That's good to know. Uh, right. So I need to super P. So, right. My laptop is now mirroring what's on what you can see. So this is the traditional Ubuntu Mate. Uh, let's get on the old Wi-Fi. That's a good idea. You are now connected to the Wi-Fi. Right, so this is Ubuntu Mate, and uh, it looks fabulous. And I should be able to install Ubuntu Mate. Now, I'm interested to know what this is going to do. Uh... So Stuart says, I'm not running 1910, which is why I'm not testing them. Well, Stuart, I have told you where you can find the ISO images. Uh, so you could do that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you could test that on the live environment. Uh, everything that you just uh, asked. Um, does this change language? Yes, it does. Brilliant. Now, I'm, I'm interested to know what happens here, because uh, if I check my keyboard does that work yes yes that looks good that's right uh, that's right that's right and I should get my favorite symbol that one right uh, continue so similar kind of thing normal or minimal do we want to download updates no install third-party nonsense 
Right, go. Now, we're going to get to the partitioning bit, which is going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting because the install that's on there is this experimental ZFS. I wonder if anyone's tried doing a side-by-side -side install on ZFS. Ah, it doesn't let you. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. This computer currently has no detected operating system. That is a lie. There is an operating system on there. But obviously, because it's using this uh, experimental ZFS, it can't detect that. That's interesting. I guess that's a missing feature because we've only recently added ZFS to the install. So expecting it to be able to do a side by side install, maybe a bit much, but something to note that in the future, people may want to do a side by side install with this. Uh, should we try a different option? Should we go for uh, encrypted while we're here? Um, yeah, encrypt. Let's do that. Now, now we choose a security key. Gosh, what am I going to choose? Come on, internet, come up with a password for me. I'm going to use the password. <laughs> there we go. My password is Stuart Langridge. That's Stuart Langridge. I don't mind giving you that password because I'm going to wipe this system in a minute anyway. <laughs> oh dear me so I imagine it's going to partition it in the traditional way because I chose I didn't choose um, yeah there we go so it's going to do a logical volume root as ext4 and a logical volume swap continue interesting so if you choose encrypted you get a swap partition you don't choose encrypted i think you get a swap file not a partition we're in london <laughs> right my name thought here's a question for the chat put my password in Doink. Now, what if I choose that? Log in automatically. I've got this thing set so that it's got an encryption phrase to fully encrypt the hard drive. Why would I bother having a login password? If you've got past the um, encryption, then you know all bets are off. So I might as well just have it set to log in automatically, right? I've still got a password. I can still lock the screen. I can still sudo. But why would I bother having an encryption password and then asking me again for my desktop password? That doesn't make a lot of sense. So, just a thought. What would you do? Would you have the belt and braces of encryption and a desktop password? I don't know. Uh, and then he says, long live Ubuntu Mate. The very good distro. <laughs> That's your strap line now, Martin. The very good distro. I agree. So yes, this is... I wonder if this has the same problem that uh, 1910 has, where you get that examples. Ah, not on the live CD. We'll have to check for that on the uh, once it's installed. Uh, what else have we got? We've got some indicators up here. What applications do you get by default here? Uh, the usual stuff. Ah, they do shop well as well. And Firefox and LibreOffice. And oh, yeah, that's something we get in Ubuntu Mate is the firewall. Gufu. Gnu. Uh, no, what's it called? Gnome Firewall. Whatever it's called. Gnome MPV and Rhythmbox for music. Cheese for your webcam. That's all good. Ah, Magnus. Stuart Angry wrote that. A magnifier. Does it work? <laughs> Stuart. What's going on here? Oh, 
Oh, you've got to put the mouse over something. I was. Oh, I'm an idiot. That's why. Look at that. Let's you zoom in and magnify and stuff. Cool. Retrieving tile. How far in can you zoom? Hey, this is good for finding, like, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> like, bits where the colours aren't right. Martin knows about that. I'm only I'm only doing this as a joke because I know Martin is well aware that that theme needs a fix. So um, yeah, that's quite funny. Uh, GUI for uncomplimented firewall. That's it. Gufuru. Yes. Uh, configuring hardware. I imagine that's like making. What's it doing? Stuff. Good stuff. So that's installing. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Amanda says, Amanda, 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 is it? I can't pronounce that, sorry. Uh, belt and braces. Yes, that's true. Rick says you might have several users. Would you have several users on a system that's got an encrypted drive? A desktop? I mean, yeah, okay, I guess everyone could share the encryption passphrase yes that does make sense everyone shares the encryption passphrase and then you each have your own desktop login that does make sense uh yes excellent excellent point better to zoom in to pulse audio to remind simon to fix it <laughs> yeah, it's a bit passive aggressive isn't it like opening a magnifying tool and zooming in on something that you know is broken to like highlight the fact that it's broken uh, Mate also has a tweak tool. Ah, Mate tweak is the thing that lets you choose the uh, panel layouts. This is the, is this the traditional one with the two panels? That's right, isn't it? I should know this. Uh, Martin like talks about this quite a lot because he's quite proud of this. Um, running DKPKG. So yeah, we're nearly done. Good stuff. A Perfect Hero is the highlighted music track, which differs from the Eurovision songs that we saw in Ubuntu. Excellent. Oh, what's that? Ah, I like that. Okay, installation has finished. Restart now. Bop. So how long was that? Was that like 10, 15 minutes, if that? And I should have an encrypted install. Pull the USB key out. And I assume when it reboots, when it reboots, we'll get asked for an encryption passphrase. Ah, this is familiar. Ah, okay. That's familiar layout. You can have multiple keys. You don't need to share it. I didn't know you could have multiple keys for encrypted disk. I guess our installer doesn't expose that. What was my password? Oh yeah, Stuart Language. Stuart Language. Excellent. We got that right. That was quick. Excellent. So we logged straight in because I did automatic login. I guess I can turn that off if I want to. Uh, so now we're in Ubuntu Mate. That's rather nice. And does this ship with Tweak? Uh, where's Tweak? Is it in preferences? That would make sense, wouldn't it? If this is the brisk menu, isn't it? If I just go like that and type Tweak. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. So nice. Um panel mm, what panel layout should we have should we have the uh, elementary style oh look at that that's quite nice isn't it I do like that what was it uh, Stuart asked have the window uh, the window control placement on the left boink there we go we can actually make this thing look a bit like unity can't we what is it mutiny yes <laughs> I do like that. 
And we've got some updates to do, same as before. That's jolly super. That worked out quite well. Oh, bum, you can't see what I can see. Sorry. Whoops. Sorry. So now, yes, all I did was go into... Uh, what was it? Tweak. This thing. Mate Tweak. Sorry, I need to... Get both displays. There we go. I've got both displays up now. Oh, that's a bug. I can't make Ali make this go away. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. There we go. Oh, brisk menu has quit. Reload. Oh dear. Gonna have to file some bugs here. I'll restart later. So yeah, the thing I did uh, was Marte tweak, and I fiddled around with these and just tried changing around the layout a bit. Which worked quite well. Uh, sorry about the uh, display being the wrong one. Uh, Marte tweak. And then I changed it to mutiny. Which worked. And then also. I went to windows. And I changed the window control from right to left. So. The windows are now in the. The icons are now in the correct place. Did you get the welcome app when you logged in there? No, I didn't, actually. I haven't seen the welcome app. I don't know if that hits you straight away or whether it comes up later. That's an interesting point, McPhail. I... Is it installed? Welcome. It is installed. Oh, man, I can't make this thing go away. Martin! Oh, you have to click that. Okay. So welcome is installed. It is there. And we do have open welcome when I log in. I wonder if I'm breaking this by doing auto login. I wonder if that's what it is. Hmm. Yes. So I look. Oh, look. We've got a crash. Oh, no. So this is the thing that people, some people don't like. I recommend you that. And uh, remember this in future and just send the report. Which works well. Awesome. Okay. So that was all I had planned uh, for today. was uh, just a little bit of noodling around. Uh, if you enjoy this thing, let me know. Uh, I, I'm happy to do this. I've got this kind of set up here ready to go. So I can do some more testing. I think now I've done, now I've done an upgrade. And I've done a couple of installs. I think what I should really do is do some actual tests. Actual go through and do the formal tests, and then um, uh, report any bugs that I find, rather than just say, I should report that and make a note. I should actually report some bugs. So I'll leave it with the link that I mentioned earlier, which you will find. The ISO tracker, remember. ISO.QA.Ubuntu.com. If some of you have time over the weekend, I would greatly appreciate it if you could take a look. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, all that nonsense. And uh, I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this, let me know. And uh, I'll do more of this kind of nonsense. We could look at other distros or look at other flavors. We could do all kinds of stuff. But leading up to 1910, I think it'd be good for us to do a bit more testing. Uh, clearly. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Have a good rest of your day. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Cheer, everyone.